Okay, in the last presentation, this is a part two of a presentation. In the last presentation, what we had to do is derive the expected value of x and the expected value of x times x minus 1. Now, it's fairly straightforward calculations. It's essentially just uh, rearranging the probability mass functions. Actually, I'll just go back up to the top here just to sort of see what you missed. Rearranging the probability mass functions so such that... Uh, you can sort of re, uh, rephrase them as slightly different probability mass functions, but still use the property that the summations of the probability mass function must equal to 1. So uh, we did that for e to the x, oh sorry, uh, the expected value of x and the expected value x times x minus 1. Now in this presentation what we're going to do is try and calculate the variance of x. But before I start actually, it's a sort of an odd one. Why are we using the expected value of x times x minus 1? The reason is actually, it actually makes very, very simple mathematics when we're trying to calculate uh, the variance of x, okay? Because if you just look at it here, x times x minus 1, okay, that is actually uh, allows for a very simple um, uh, simplifications and, you know, just use the one uh, sort of procedure each, uh, each time and actually the, work, the calculations work out very quickly. Now, if you use e to the expected value of x squared, this 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 ca this calculation which we did in the last video, it does not work out as neatly at all. Okay, so that is the reason. So what we're going to do now is calculate the expected value of x squared. Okay, and we found that the expected value of x times x minus one to be lambda squared. Okay, in the last video. Okay, worked out to be a nice, short, easy calculation once you know the tricks. But now what we are going to do is tackle the big one, the uh, variance of x. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I just just slightly re-express the this here. The ex expected value of x times x minus one is the expected value of x squared minus x, which can be written as the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x. Okay, that is getting very close to what we need for the variance. Okay, just as it, in a, let that settle there for a second. Just as in general, the expected value of, in general, uh, the expected value of x plus y is, is equal to the expected value of x plus the expected value of y. Even if x and y are not independent, even if y is a f so like x squared or something like that, or minus x squared or something like that, okay? So anyway, the variance of x is equal to the expected value of x squared minus the expect, uh, the x squared, the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x to be squared, that very famous definition, okay? Now, we have part of this, okay? So, what we're going to do here is, we have this before, this is the expected value of x times x minus 1, just rephrased, and we know that it is lambda squared, okay? But, we need to just actually readjust that, just that we, uh, so what we're going to do is add in expected value of x just back in just to make this calculation here I just blocked a little bit out there just to make that a little bit more visible okay the expected value of x a little bit of dirt in my hand if you pardon me it's just lit my fire here because it's cold it's December in Ireland anyway the expected value of x Okay, minus the expected value of x to be squared. That's a very straightforward calculation. We found that earlier on to be the expected value of x was lambda. Simply minus that squared. Okay, so lambda squared minus lambda squared, they cancel out. So the answer is lambda. The variance of x is equal to lambda, which is also the expected value of x. Okay, so again, now this is relating to binomial, geometric. This is actually the big part of this video, really that this approach here is much simpler. Um, you just need a little bit of lateral thinking. That's important. Rather than uh, just going straight at it. Okay. Uh, so this is a sort of, it sidesteps a lot of tough calculations, this approach here. The expected value of x times x minus 1. As opposed to, this is the main way to calculate it. This is the actual the formula in uh, that you actually, this is that the general formula for the variance of a discrete random variable, just what I have there. If you're trying to calculate x squared directly using the same approach, it's not that it's impossible, it's just that it's actually 
quite tough and you get bogged down in a lot of really nasty calculations pretty easy uh, straight away this approach here that we did use is a little bit less obvious okay particularly if you're just sort of studying this for the first time but actually it sidesteps a lot of hard calculations and it makes use of a lot of nice simplifications and then all we have to do is do some just add and subtract very simple calculations so that's it we'll leave it there that's part b much shortened part a but i don't want to go on forever